What is up everyone? Welcome to another video. Today we got a double session. It's a five hour leg day, so it's gonna be an absolute doozy. I'm gonna take you through my five tips to perform at elite levels that I think are super impactful and will carry on for the rest of your life throughout this video. Pushing the body to elite levels is gonna require a ton of sacrifice and discipline, and obviously it puts a ton of stress in your CNS and your body, so making sure to do the proper things day in and day out is gonna be absolute game changer. So I'm gonna reiterate this time and time again, but step one is to eat nutrient-dense whole foods as much as you can for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. And of course it's gonna to be tough at times to get the most optimal stuff in, but make sure you're having foods with low seed oils and nutrient-dense foods that just is an absolute powerhouse that fuels your body, your muscles, and your mind throughout the day. I'm starting to become a lot more cognizant of seed oils and certain things that are going in my body as I'm trying to get different slight edges to perform at my best. So I've been going with, so for bread, I'm, I'm not gonna eliminate bread completely from my diet, but sourdough bread has been an absolute go-to for me. It's way better on my gut, people who are gluten sensitive. Then obviously I have raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, whole eggs, which is a nutrient powerhouse. And then I'm going to do a 20 gram Greek protein yogurt. So I know that cooking a big breakfast every morning isn't super optimal for a lot of people due to like time constraints. So I recommend doing overnight oats or something that has carbs, fats, and proteins in it just so you can fuel that engine throughout the day. But if not, I do highly recommend starting the day with three eggs. So just put them in a pan, crack them real quick. Now it's time to scoop these onto the bread. That took me four minutes to cook. I mean, it's really not that difficult to throw some eggs on a pan and cook them on up. And I'm telling you, it's gonna be invaluable for your performance. So next time you find yourself going for a, like a crappy bar in the morning or eating something that's really not that nutrient dense, flip the switch and be like, no, I can spend five to 10 minutes cooking breakfast and then eating it for five to 10 minutes. Prioritize the things that matter to you. So if you really wanna be the dude that you say you wanna be, whether it be an elite performer in sports or even business or even school, you need a good proper nutrient dense breakfast so make sure you get that in and don't cut corners. Look at that, three whole eggs on a sourdough, a cup of blueberries, blackberries, and raspberries, and a protein yogurt, easy as that. Oh, also make sure to drink like 28 ounces of water with breakfast every morning to stay hydrated and to flush down your food. The second tip I can give you is don't shy away from supplements. I know some people just think that, that it's expensive pee or whatnot, but we're truly not getting the amount of nutrients and minerals in our food as much as we'd like to say we are, we're just not. So supplementing with magnesium, 300 to 500 milligrams a day, makes me know for sure that I'm not gonna cramp, my muscles are gonna perform the way I want, my muscles are gonna perform the way I want to, and I'm gonna sleep properly. So supplementing definitely has its place, not in place of eating whole nutrient dense foods, but it has its place. All right, so we just finished making our subs. We got our carbon electrolyte powder in here. Now we're off to session number one. Obviously a major thing for elite performance is not getting hurt and that comes with a proper warm up. So as you see here, we got every eight minutes for 24 minutes, we have rowing, snatches, burpee, box jump overs, and more rowing. So it's very important for me to get my tissue prepared. So I did a little foam roller work. I did some band work just to prime my muscles to get them activated. Did some T-spine work because we're gonna do a lot of stuff overhead. And the T-spine pretty much controls the shoulder, controls overhead shoulder flexion, all that good stuff. So if your T-spine's glued and it's not moving into proper extension and flexion, you're gonna have problems getting overhead, especially with a dumbbell snatch. And then for burpee box jump overs, I did a little hip work, did a little Edo portal squat routine, and then I did a little tibialis anterior raises just because we wanna prime the patella tendon and the shins 
for the load it's about to handle with the jumps via the burpee box jump. And then that will also help with rowing 500 meters. And yeah, like I said, you just wanna get a little blood flow into the body, nothing too crazy. My big mobility routine will be tonight after I'm, and I'll show you that as well, after I'm pretty much done with this doozy of a day. completed that. We did each round in about seven minutes. I completely underestimated how difficult that was gonna be. Going from 20 dumbbell snatches alternating with 80 pounds into the burpee box jumps. I have my airway then. I have my airway then, that's why I sound like this. It was way harder than I thought. But, like I said, if you wanna achieve elite performance, you need to put in the work and kinda put the pain and the feeling of doubt aside. That's what I do, I just keep moving. I'm not moving at elite paces yet in terms of crossing standard, but I'm happy to be able to get these done within the eight minute intervals. So we crushed that, now we're gonna go home and work, eat some food, and recover before session number two. It's lunchtime, absolutely starving after that first session. Forgot to mention that I absolutely ate shit on the burpee box jump overs. Went to jump over the box, was a little fatigued, hit the shin as hard as possible, gushing blood, gotta love it. You know, I just it's one of those moments where you just put your hands on the box and go, all right, take like 10 seconds to regroup and then you keep on chugging, even though I was absolutely gushing blood and it killed. Oh, it's mega spill, but we're all right, we kept it going. So um, right now we got the bison and rice going. Like I said, every single, every single weekday, my lunch is bison and rice. 300 grams of jasmine rice cooked and 220 grams of bison. Then I'm gonna dice this avocado up and mix it all up and pretty much just eat it. And this will kind of get me through, what I notice is around, like I get to the gym around two-ish for my second session. And then around five, I really start to hit a wall. So once I do my snatches, my back squats, and my, my other stuff, by the time I'm going into my Metcon, I'm like super depleted. So I think I'm gonna bring a banana and obviously my carbs as well. So this is gonna be a learning experience for me too. I'm gonna start eating a lot more during training just because my glycogen stores are so depleted by the time I get into that Metcon, which like I always talk about, building my engine is the most important thing. Before I head off to session two, I just want to say, remember to have fun with this too. It's, it's super important to fall in love with the process and fall in love with the grind because if you actually do want to achieve elite levels or even advanced levels or even just a better version of yourself, it's not going to come by doing things the easy way. So you have to find love in the pain, in the journey, in the process and just stay in the day, stay in the moment. I try to capitalize on every single second of the day just win every single day. Because when I get too far ahead of myself or think in the past, I get lost. It's, it's, it's just a, it's a dangerous road to do that. So stay in the day, become obsessed with the process, obsessed with getting better. It, just enjoy this thing, man. Like, we only get one shot at this life, so if you truly want to be about it, then be about it and enjoy it. Alright, we just did a lot of volume work. Now we're doing some heavy singles every two minutes. Here's 195. Let's kill it.
is an absolute huge lift for me. 225 is something I've been shooting for for the last like six or seven months since starting snatching. My overhead strength has not been there because I've never actually trained it before like six months ago. So just learning how to get that vertical power, get that triple extension, and then catch and stabilize 225, I stood that right up and I'm very, very pleased about it. Let's go. every three minutes for 12 minutes, 365 for six in the front squats. So like I said, I'm just trying to build my muscular endurance as I increase my strength and power. It was super difficult, we just had to push through. And then for the Metcon, we did 30 cows in the row, five dumbbell hang squat cleans, 10 thrusters, 15 front squats, and the 20 chest to bar pull-ups. Building the engine, getting fatigued as I go, but like I said, this is a five hour session for a reason. It's meant to push me, it's meant to meet it's meant for me to train under fatigue, and we got it done. All right guys, so we just showered up. We just finished our five hour double session leg day. It was obviously a super fatiguing session, and it's okay to admit that. I mean, throughout the entire training session, there were times where I was like, damn, this is getting tough, this is getting fatiguing, and that's okay. The training is meant to push me to get to those elite levels, and I'm, and I'm forcing my body to adapt. And I think it's okay to understand where you are in the specific moment, don't look ahead to what others are doing or compare yourself to people that you want to be in the future. Just focus on you and hammer at what you need to get done that day, as I talked about earlier. So my strain right now is a 15.9, which is pretty high for the day, and especially to start the week when I have four other double sessions and a triple session coming up. But I'm gonna show you guys what I'm eating for dinner. It's gonna be like, I have a little ground sirloin type tortellini soup. And then I'm going to show you what I do for mobility and recovery so I can stay primed and fat like reduce fatigue so I can train at the level I want to. So we got this 90-10 ground sirloin going with tortellini, carrots, zucchini, and then some sauce. No seed oils in here, just a lot of good fuel and something that I like to eat because it's easy to cook in the crock pot. And then tonight I'll show you what I'm going to have for a late night snack. All right, so every night I pretty much do this mobility routine. I'm gonna use the, so after I do the mobility work, I'm gonna strap on the Mark Pro, which activates your lymphatic system. I put, like tonight, I did a five hour leg day, so I'll strap this on my quads. I'll do pretty much four positions on my quads, and then if it's a shoulder day, I'll attach it to my shoulders. And then I use the toe spacers to spread my toes out after they've been compressed by my shoe all day. This is something that I thought was maybe placebo, but I have seen a ton of really good things from it. And then I'm gonna get into my first position here. So I sit in this 90-90 external internal rotation stretch for about three minutes each side. And the goal is to dig this front leg into external. So it's PNF patterning. So I'm gonna dig it in for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm gonna ease into it a little more. And the same thing goes with the back leg. We wanna stay in this position and we really wanna own these ranges. And that's gonna help keep your back fresh your hips moving properly, and especially when you're trying to achieve elite levels, you're trying to get further along in your day-to-day -day life, further along in your goals, you wanna have a body that's moving and working for you. So then we're gonna switch to the other side, do the same exact thing, and then pretty much we're gonna dig this lax ball into my teres minor, my pec minor, and then my glute med, and then I'll roll it around my plantar fascia, free those areas up, get them uncalcified, ungritty. And then we also have my peanut. I put this on my rhomboids up and down my back. And that tissue work only takes like five or so minutes. And then I sit in this deep squat position because this is a position I wanna own, especially doing Olympic lifts and certain things like squats, deadlifts. You wanna be comfortable in these ranges. 
So then I go into thoracic spine extension a little I mean, rotation, and then go into thoracic spine rotation here, just to really free those ranges up because your thoracic spine and your hips control everything. If those are not locked in, then you're gonna have problems up and down the chain. And so the last big thing I do is I go quadruped and I do cat cow. So I drive my thoracic spine into extension and then I drive it into flexion. So obviously the thoracic spine controls a lot. It allows for overhead shoulder flexion, which is huge for overhead athletes, which is huge for keeping your shoulders in line, keeping your shoulders not from getting impinged. So really make sure you're freeing that T-spine up. So freeing the T-spine up, freeing the hips up will provide massive value to your performance long term. And like I said, this takes about 15 minutes every night. We wanna optimize our bodies, then we better be spending the time at night because I know you do have time. Just carve out a little piece here or there. I don't care if you do tissue work for seven minutes and then the mobility work for seven minutes. Just get it done and I promise you, you will feel a million times better throughout your day and throughout the training sessions. All right, so for the last meal of the night, we got the sourdough bread, peanut butter, bananas, and drizzle it with honey. It tastes absolutely fire. I'm a big consumer of peanut butter. I just like the way it tastes and I think it's good calories. So I'm just gonna stop eating Jif and Skippy peanut butter as much and I'm gonna make the switch to Teddy's all natural peanut, peanut butter, which is pretty much just peanut butter. There's no palm kernel oil or any crap in it. So what I'm gonna try to do over the next two months is notice if there's a massive difference between my performance and like the way I'm acting, bloating, acne, certain things that I may have not have noticed in the past from eating all that peanut butter that has those oils in it. So I'm excited to see about that. Because as you know, I'm all about chasing performance and all about getting that slight edge. And of course, we're going with another Greek protein yogurt, 20 grams, and then we are going with the cherry limeade sparkling ice. This thing hits absolutely different at night. And like I said, I can't go without it. I don't even care if it's like, there's some sort of problem with it. I love the way it tastes.